We had some incredibly sad news that broke Thursday night that Akira Toriyama passed away at the age of 68. And I was kind of unsure if I was going to make a video around this since I'm not really a, a Dragon Ball focused channel. But then I started to kind of think about this a bit more with the impact that he had on my life growing up, especially in like that late 90s, early 2000s time period when it was very socially awkward in school and something that I had sort of witnessed and lived through with the Dragon Ball franchise breaking out into the into the West, Western audience. And uh, I, I kind of wanted to talk about some of that here today, some of my, my fond memories around this and really just the, the impact that Akira Toriyama had on really the, the world at this point. I don't, I feel like it can't be overstated just how much of an effect he had on an entire generation and uh, that's what I wanted to go over here today. So he, again, he did pass away at the age of 68. Don't want to speculate around too much of that, but it does appear to have been very sudden. It wasn't something that was really expected. So it, it unfortunate, unfortunate stuff, very sad stuff here. Um, but obviously many people know him as the creator of Dragon Ball. He's, uh, he's of course, been involved with many other franchises like, uh, like the Dragon Quest franchise, Chrono Trigger, legendary title there even something a little less known like blue dragon but if you look at blue dragon you can see akira toriyama's fingerprints all over the the character designs there uh, but growing up especially in in the 90s and then into the like early 2000 time period uh, we had we had dragon ball start to show up or dragon ball z specifically start to show up in the west even though it had been running in japan for a while then at that time but we had this running on to not toonami and it didn't necessarily break into the, the, we'll say, the mainstream until, I'd say, like a year or so after it had started to air on Toonami. And the reason for that is because we would basically run from the beginning of the Saiyan saga with Raditz showing up until Goku landed on Namek and was about to fight Jason Birder. And it would just restart back to the beginning. It did this three or four times, and it was a good part of a year that this was going on, and it had to do with, like, licensing for episodes, rights, there were different dubs, it was a whole thing <laughs> to go over, but essentially, we got to a position where they were able to figure all that stuff out, and they aired another 80 or so episodes, which did introduce us to the legendary moment where Goku became a Super Saiyan, and I remember going to school during all of this as it was happening in real time then with Dragon Ball starting to become more and more popular and these episodes were airing and you started to kind of see a shift and an interest in Dragon Ball Z, but also kind of just in sort of the, the nerd pop culture stuff with video games and anime kind of on the upswing. And I have talked about this before that there was a time period then where it wasn't cool to talk about video games like that or cartoons or anime or go to school in a video game shirt nothing like that you pretty much went to school then especially when when I remember in like middle school that you would be immediately judged on your clothes your shoes uh your upbringing how you acted that sort of thing so you were there were social classes at that time and there was no social media or a way to really communicate outside of school unless you could, could borrow the phone like the landline in the house and hope that you got your friend on the other line or, or just someone you were trying to talk to it wasn't very common so when Dragon Ball Z started to come up and it did have those moments where you had like the the Super Saiyan kind of time period happen where people were noticing this and all of a sudden you'd go to school and people were talking about the the latest episode on Toonami for Dragon Ball Z and everyone kind of started to look around and realize oh we have like common ground here with this common denominator with Dragon Ball Z and I'll tell you I made a lot of friends just because of Dragon Ball being able to kind of break the ice when you look over and you see someone drawing like the the hair trying to get it like just right with a character on like their book cover which we'd like cover our books with like paper and stuff back then and uh people would be drawing on that or they'd be drawing on their binders i have to imagine there is an entire generation of artists and animators who were just completely inspired from akira toriyama's work just on what i saw people who never really tried to get into i mean i even tried it at one point i was like let me see if i can 
get like the the Goku Super Saiyan hair just right. And it really got to the point where people who weren't really talking or interacting before that would start to hang out or sit together at lunch. That was a big one. There was a whole Dragon Ball table then, and it continued to grow and grow and grow. And there was this sense of unity that wasn't there before. And then it would like branch off into people talking about video games and and other interests. And genuine friendship was was made on the back of Dragon Ball Z. And I feel like that's one of the major reasons so many people right now look back on this. And sure, there are many, like, like now people look at it as typical anime tropes and stuff that happened, whether it's overcoming insurmountable odds with Goku, being able to finally beat Frieza, and that maybe inspiring people to keep pushing and, and keep trying to get better as they went forward through some, again, very difficult and awkward years of their life, or just characters that went through legitimate moral issues in the in the storyline and they would change really their their own character and their viewpoints on things and friendships within the series and alliances and there there was just a lot of stuff happening there that I think resonated with many uh, of the the younger audience then that was growing up and that's why a lot of us look back on that time period but also still on just Dragon Ball Z as being a pretty serious part of of our lives. So when you see someone like Akira Toriyama, who's responsible really for all of it, pass away, it hit really hard. I mean, even now when we had the Dragon Ball Super uh, years ago that was going on, I was tuning in week to week and and having a blast watching it. And I'm not the biggest manga reader. I, I understand there's a lot that's still been going on. And I I'd like to think that we'll see that be turned into an anime and and I can kind of go through it that way. And I know we do have some Dragon Ball content coming up. Obviously, the video game, we do have uh, another show coming up as as well. So it does seem like the, the Dragon Ball uh, d machine will continue on, but it's still going to be tough, obviously, with Akira Toriyama having passed away. Uh, and I think those shows, the manga, the, the video games, they're going to hit a lot different now, right? Where it's just going to, it's going to have that feeling of like, oh man, that's right. Akira Toriyama is not around anymore for this. Uh, I mean, we're still going to, I'm, I'm sure be playing it and, and enjoying the, the series, but it is going to be something that we look back on and remember kind of the impact that he had on many of us growing up. And I'm sure many generations to come because that the work he's done, you can go back and watch the the Dragon Ball Z episodes from when it was first coming up, and the, the, I mean, for a lot of us in the in the nineties, still perfectly fine, aged great. I, I think you could have a blast watching it now. So there will be many many generations of of people coming up that still view the work and uh, and probably get on board with the Dragon Ball series and. Maybe it's because their parents are really into it and they get them into it, but it's something that will continue to live on. I could reminisce at this point for hours around the old days of Dragon Ball, whether it was going online using Kaza to download Dragon Ball Z AMVs, not being able to watch it on my desktop, by the way, because it was Penny One 90 megahertz. Instead, I would sort of sneak upstairs and watch it on my parents' new Pentium 3 desktop because it was able to play audio and video at the same time. Big deal, by the way, back then, to when Budokai first came out on the PS2. Colossal deal to see Dragon Ball Z represented in a high-quality video game like that, especially because they had different scenes from from the show being uh, recreated in, in that space. It was, it was awesome. And I would go over to my, my friend's house every day after school because they got the game and we'd just play it for hours. Eventually, it came out on the GameCube and I got it like right away. And it looked awesome there. They had like a different shading effect compared to the PS2. And it was, it was great to have that game and be able to kind of play through it at home on my own time then to really arguing power levels back in the day on different forums, like very, very primitive message boards to, I'm not kidding, guest books on GeoCity. There's a lot of power level arguing going on back then. Look, you get past the hundred, that the 500,000 and you get into the millions, things just got off the rails. But at the end of all of this, what I really want to say is just thank you. Thank you, Akira Toriyama, because, again, the impact from his creations here, kind of the world he built out, the characters, what it really ended up doing was bringing together all walks of life, all different people from different backgrounds 
uh, all because of Dragon Ball. And it, it, it it's hard to put into words, really, the, the impact it had on, I'm sure, my, my childhood. It's, it's very much ingrained with that. But also, I'm sure, many, many other people out there. So at this time, I'll hand it off to you, the viewer. You can let me know your, your favorite memories for Dragon Ball, maybe growing up or even more recent memories for it down below in the comments thanks everyone for watching and of course rest in peace to the legend akira toriyama